Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Bosch has come out with yet another freak impact driver slash impact wrench, and I gotta say we're pretty excited about that proposition. While the performance of early generations one and generation 1.5 sort of went from bad to worse, the Gen 2 was a full leap ahead into the modern era power-wise. So this new GDX 18V-1860 or Gen 3 Bosch Freak, by our math, should be even better. This is the 1860 model generously loaned to us by Bowtie Dooley, check out his Instagram. 1860 is of course meaning 1860 inch pounds of torque. They're rating this at 155 equivalent foot pounds, a step up from the Gen 2's 1800 or 150 foot pounds. But given our history with Bosch and their ratings on freaks, I think we're going to have to visit the dyno before we lend too much credence to what the box or model numbers in this case say. This newest gen sells for $159 bare currently, not particularly cheap for a driver, and the same price the 1800 debuted at. As a matter of fact, a lot of this Gen 3 tool is very similar to that Gen 2. Same weight, size, length, overall appearance, but for that $159 price point, you do get some features Bosch has been including on tools like these. This one comes ready for Bluetooth Connect to Bosch's Toolbox app where you can customize your own mode settings with RPM, power, slow start, and auto off adjustments. The last Gen 2 only really had one of those as options. But the 1860 also comes out of the box with a few of its own new mode settings too. Here's the first one. We put the test bolt into the dyno backwards here to sort of simulate a nut run down here. So this first mode is sort of like low. It limits torque to 30 foot pounds or so by our calculations to snug things up but in reverse, you still get full beams. Here's the next preset option. So this is quick bursts of like two to four foot pounds or so to maybe incrementally snug up a fastener until it feels about right to you. Then this last preset is basically medium, I'd say, tightening to 40, 40 plus foot pounds or so. All of these still have full power in reverse for loosening. But if you do have a specific task in mind you plan on doing over and over, log into that app, customize the mode's power delivery, and select that setting on your tool each time you want to do that. I think it's pretty cool. You may have noticed that we're using a socket adapter here, yet this tool's flagship selling point is being able to use a socket right on the tool without an adapter. Well, the last three generations of Freak famously on our channel, for head scratching reasons, all made more power with a socket adapter extension than straight onto the socket itself. All while in a past video, we've had luck with a swapped over standard square drive anvil onto a Milwaukee impact driver, and they're making more torque. So the adapter itself is surely not making extra beans on its own somehow. So does the Gen 3 here also suffer from this odd phenomenon that we're not entirely sure Bosch even knew about as well? And what could be causing that weird difference? We tried to answer both of those things in our first test series called Working Torque, which is up now, First with the socket adapter, which again, we've had the most luck with, contrary to all forms of logic we've been able to employ. It's a five second test in forward. Up first is the Gen 1 versus the later introduced Gen 1.5 brush model that was less coin. Only 50 foot pounds and a whole 69 foot pounds. Now for some of you, maybe 69 is a whole lot to handle, but around these parts, we're used to dealing with even more on our hands, although admittedly also lasting about five seconds. So yeah, these two didn't exactly rock our worlds. Now for the Gen 2. One hundred and twenty nine basically an order of magnitude up from the first two freak examples is the Gen three following in those footsteps then let's see the newest addition to the freak line the eighteen sixty one hundred and twenty two foot pounds so less than that Gen two a bit perplexing so far. Maybe some more of Bosch's marketing misdirection. Let's put a pin in that for now because we have some serious perplexities to ponder. Why in all that is torquey do these tools make more beans with an adapter? And does the Gen 3 also? And if so, why does that? Here's the Gen 3 with its half inch anvil straight into that same socket now, 
right after the run you just witnessed, still full charge battery. So that 122 is now turned into 105, matching every bit of data we've been able to show on these tools so far. You might be thinking, but will you actually notice that kind of difference? And the answer is yes. Here's the tool loosening its 122 foot-pounds with an adapter. About two and a half seconds. And here's it removing its 105 foot-pound run straight onto the socket. Five and a half seconds now to remove less torque. One of the far-fetched ideas you guys had down in the comments is that a vacant hex center in the middle of the anvil is somehow, I don't know, flexing, caving in, resonating? Anyways, it being empty, being no bueno for some reason, you said we should put one of our mini broken off hex adapter shanks into that cavity to sort of, I don't know, brace it, some extra support. Well, it sounded silly enough to have fun with, so here's that. One hundred and thirteen foot pounds, the exact halfway point between these two examples. This may look like a fluke or happenstance, but we tried this on each test we run, longer lengths always halfway between an adapter and adapter list. The dyno yet again laughing at our assumptions in the comment section appearing at least this time, slightly less crazy, vindication for you part-time physicists out there. But Bosch, are you listening? We're giving you gold R&D here, free of charge. Perhaps if we welded the hex bit in there full time, it would even close up the gap a bit more. Or heck, let's invent some type of solid, I don't know, half inch anvil that doesn't even have a hole in the center to make the most beans, like some type of wrenching tool that impacts. We'll call it an impact wrench. <laughs> we could make a fortune. All right, all right, I digress. Back to the 1860, it made less power than the Gen 2 in its first run. So let's see how it does versus all of those freaks in a reverse run, 10 seconds of it in our max torque test. One hundred and sixty three. Now that's what we've been waiting to see a real tangible going to be felt power difference above the Gen 2, especially in reverse where Bosch has finally taken the industry bait and started giving these tools nut busting or breakaway figures. They're calling this guy rated for 270 foot pounds. Not so sure about that figure, but maybe some other channels out there can shine some light on that. Looking good so far though, our last test before heading to the rank chart is max forward torque, 10 seconds in that forward direction now. We're jumping into the Gen 1, 1.5 and 2 comparison now. Here's the Gen 2 on screen. That Gen 2 liking forward, like most impact drivers do, and putting up some real gap on the others now. Now let's see if the Gen 3 still has the heat. One hundred sixty-three again, a bit close in performance to that Gen Two, but everywhere still bringing that little bit more. Bosch said the new generation is about three percent more power than the last, and we can say that's at least shown here, probably more. But let's head to the old rank chart to see if it can climb up that rank list any further for the freaks. Starting down here below its closest freak competition, its power runs are turned into points by dividing by five on our impact drivers rank chart. So that's twenty-four, thirty-three, and thirty-three. Still 5.8 inches long, sharing a similar shell to that Gen 2, but making a few more beans. That comes out to 28.1 foot-pounds per inch. Its torque claim rose to 155, and it made 163 for us, still getting that max of 100 points here. Like most modern impact drivers do, you love to see it. Still $159 though, and it hasn't come down yet. That works out to just 8.2 points as a function of price. Not so great. 
But that totals 226.3, taking over the seventh spot for First Among the Freaks, and just below the Bower, which made basically the same exact power. Of course, that one being brushed longer has zero modes, but is one quarter the price after all, so it's situated here higher in the ranking. We feel like there's more to like about the new Freak than ever. If any of the past Freaks were worth your dollars and your estimation, this one is even more by our math. And they do continue to get better with each generation, so we're always looking forward to the next one when it does come out. Happy to be able to shed a sliver of light on the fact that these tools make different power attached versus using an adapter into sockets and why. Hope you guys enjoy those sometimes unexplainable oddities as much as we do when we discover them. Join us on our next adventure by clicking the subscribe button and like button because YouTube seems to love counting those. And thanks as always for watching.